Now, it's a while since I've passed comment on the mainstream bullshit news. So, strap in tight, finish your dinner, and I'll begin. Starting with the London riots. Now, hang on, did I say riots? Were they really riots? Don't people normally get injured in riots? Don't people normally fight in riots? The images I saw looked more like youths milling about, gobbing at TV cameras, with the same television clip of someone stealing a TV set from the wall of a shop being repeated about three million times. I exaggerate, but you get the picture. I think we need another word for these events, because they clearly were not riots. Let's call them mild disturbances. The visually impressive fires, which were broadcast via cameras from a helicopter, had all the hallmarks of professional handiwork, not that of badly behaved teens nicking things from shops, then starting fires haphazardly. I heard of stories of journalists paying money to so-called rioters to go into shops and vandalise or steal something so they could get it on camera. Just look at this interview screened on Sky News with some of the alleged rioters after the events. OK, lads, I want you all to stand over there on that wasteland and wear these on your faces. Do they think we were born yesterday? Compare these mild disturbances with the poll tax riots or the miners' strike. They are like chalk and cheese. Now, if the intelligence agencies wanted to deliberately start this situation, it would not require a huge team or operation to do so. Control of the media is an important requirement, which MI5 operate like a puppet master controlling Pinocchio's strings. The other requirement to instigate these disturbances would be an event to start the ball rolling. We come to the cold-blooded murder of 29-year-old Mark Duggan, who was shot by a police officer for no reason whatsoever. The family were then completely ignored by the police over a considerable period, who refused to deal with the relatives' inquiries. This created the necessary tension to start the ball rolling. Initially, they said he had a gun. It turned out he didn't have a gun. Then, they said it looked like he had a gun. It turned out it didn't look like he had a gun. He was a very popular member of the community, and I have been informed that he did not have a criminal record, as reported in the media. If this was an orchestrated event, they couldn't have chosen a better target to cause maximum revolt than choosing Mark Duggan. Why wasn't the police officer who shot him immediately arrested and detained like anyone else would have been if they shot someone for no reason? Instead, the police complaints authority stepped in. What a bunch of chocolate fire guards they are. They couldn't lie straight in bed. Most people would dismiss such theories, mainly because they cannot see a motive for the authorities wanting to start a riot. What possible motive would there be? Surely this is just making more work for themselves. It would be such a crazy thing to do. These are the same kind of comments we hear from 9-11 and 7-7 conspiracy deniers when pointing out that events were in fact orchestrated from behind a veil by intelligence agencies. Here are a few things that have happened as a result of the mild disturbances. The Home Office has proposed new police powers to allow them to clear the streets and tell the public to leave an area during a riot or other mild disturbance. The power will entitle a police superintendent to declare a specific district a public no-go area for a limited time. The US is allegedly so concerned about security in the UK at the 2012 Olympics, it is preparing to send up to 1,000 of its agents, including 500 from the FBI, to provide protection for America's contestants and diplomats. Is that because British security forces, who are often used to train the Americans, can't do the job themselves? During the Olympics, the military were initially seconded to provide some maritime surveillance off Weymouth and Portland near the Olympic sailing venue, but will now be expanded to include vehicle checks at all Olympic venues and other specialist roles. The cost of the security for the Olympics is now being estimated at more than £2 billion as more military officers are being drafted in to conduct security checks at venues. Does somebody know something we don't? One person who used to live in the affected area in Tottenham and who knows some of the families involved is Jackie Noyes. In this YouTube clip, filmed just after the killing of Mark Duggan, Jackie reacts to the situation. Hi, I just felt like I had to make this video. Um, certain issues have made me really angry. 
and it's close to home for me because I was born and I was raised in Tottenham, yeah. Born in Stokey, raised in Tottenham. Used to live on Bordwater Farm, then I lived on Seven Sisters, yeah. So I know the area well, I know people down there. Still got family down there, right? What's made me vex, okay? Thursday, a man was shot, his name was Mark, outside Tottenham Hill Police Station, yeah. I was listening to the story from it first broke, okay. Witness statements say the man did not have a gun. I repeat, yeah, Mark was not carrying a gun. Witness statements from the event say that two men were asked to get out of a vehicle. One was a minicab driver, one was Mark, yeah. They were asked to get onto the floor, okay, and then there was three shots heard. And that was three shots by the police, yeah. They shot the man cold-blooded in the head and killed the brother on the floor blatantly like that in front of people at the tube station, right? Children, people there, adults, everything. The police just went round the car and killed, killed, killed the brother one time, okay? Now that's, that's fair enough. But the thing is, the police did not even inform the family of Mark what had happened to him. He had to be named, as all the media is saying, he's named on the road, as in the police didn't give them official information. Nobody gave the media this man's name. He was named on road because people have had to say who he was, right? And the thing is, if they're supposed to have shot him in the head, the police couldn't ID him. If he was carrying no ID, how would the police know who he was, okay? So anyway, his friends have named him. He's been named from road. So last night, this happened last week, right? 4th of August this happened. So last night, it was a peaceful protest by Mark's family. They want answers. They want to know why they weren't informed by the police. They made a peaceful protest. They went to the station. They walked from Gordwater Farm to Tottenham High Road and they went to the station seeking answers. They wanted to speak to a senior police officer. They were ignored. Nobody came out to that family. They've had no answers. They don't know what's happened to their son, their brother, their uncle. You know, it's a family member. How would you feel if you heard that a family of a member family member of yours had just been cold blooded, shot in the head, right, for nothing at all? Man not even carrying gun. Yet we hear in the media that this a gun has been found and he had a gun. Not one single witness from Tottenham Howe has turned around and said that they've seen Mark holding a gun. Just remember that, people, okay? Don't believe everything you hear in the media and everything you read, because more time they've got ulterior motives and things are happening because they want to change laws or do something else in society. So don't believe everything that you read and you hear, okay? My sister also knows this guy well, and she says he's a, fam he's a family guy, he's got four children, he's no gangster, he's no gangster. And can you also tell me this year, how did the poli how did the media manage to get a picture of Mark all up like this, with g making gun gestures in his face? Yeah. So you can find a picture of the man that you've murdered and killed on road, yeah, but you can't inform the family what's happened to this guy. I find that disgusting, absolutely disgusting, and I can totally understand why the family are angry and upset. Okay, they've lost their son, their brother, their uncle. I can understand that. I feel for them. So what happens last night, Saturday night, down in Tottenham, Tottenham High Road, after this peaceful protest, yeah, some people decided to kick off the burning shit. But why are you burning down shops? Why are you troubling your own high road, right? Why are you robbing people, your own people on the street, yeah? You're, you're burning down shops, you're mashing up your own ends. Who do you think is going to build Tottenham back up now, right? Who do you think is going to build up your area? Do you think people are going to take time to build up Tottenham and make it somewhere? Do you think so? I don't think so. And when you're sitting at home with your stolen laptops and whatever else you took here, I hope you feel guilty because you did that in the name of a man that was killed. What, all this, yeah? Look at the pictures of Tottenham. When you walk down your high street tomorrow or next week, yeah, you feel proud for what you've done to your high road. Look at the, what, what you've done to Tottenham, yeah? And it makes me feel sick. I have memories on that high road. Look what you've done. People were made homeless last night. You don't even know if there were people in those flats and in those shops when you set fire to them. Yeah? All you little opportunistic teeth and crooks, right? You know, you make me sick. You have made the whole public issue all about what's happened on Tottenham High Road and everyone is not talking about the main issue, which was the fact that a man got murdered in cold blood by the police on the floor who was not even holding the weapon. So you brothers that took part in this year, I don't care whether you're black, white, Asian, whatever colour you were, this ain't no race thing. It's about greed 
and having to have materialistic things without thinking any deeper. You can't get any deeper than that level, yeah? Anyway, that's all I've got to say, yeah? To all you brothers and sisters who did that, made that mess in Tottenham, yeah? Right? You'd be ashamed of yourself and you did that in the name of a man that was dead. What's been achieved here? What has been achieved here? We've gone back to the 1980s, Broadwater Farm, right? I still remember. I, I lived on Broadwater Farm as well. I still remember. Do you understand? You lot have just made me sick and I hope you, you get to see this video. If you lot, if anyone watching this video and you know certain people at that riot, yeah, and they made all that mess, you send this video to them because you lot are disgusting and you've disgusted me and I'm ashamed, right? And, and once again, sympathy and condolences go out to Mark Duggan's family. I feel for you. I'm so sorry. But those little idiots that did that, you might be sick, guys. You might be sick. So who was the officer that shot Mark Duggan? We, the public, need to know more about him, and I will explain why. On this show, we have discussed, with the help of researcher Neil Sanders, Manchurian candidate-style killings. This is where a person is selected, then put under mind control using hypnosis and other techniques, and programmed to go and kill someone. Is this not a possibility in this case? Stay with me here, because here is my logic. If this was an orchestrated event, and Duggan was deliberately killed to trigger the riots, what police officer in their right mind would agree to do such a thing, bearing in mind what might happen to him afterwards, potentially a life sentence? The easiest way for the orchestrators would be to use the extremely well-practiced tool of mind control.